Thank you very much. Uh, how many people here are PDEL or Poodle users currently? Oh, that's a pretty good number. Okay, well, we'll get started. And however you say it, it's fine. PDEL, Poodle. I'll, I'll tend to say Poodle, but uh, just in, insert your own pronunciation when you hear me. So about the library, um, we've been going quite now for almost, uh, over 10 years. You can see that uh, the 0 0.98 release was back in uh, June of 2013. And now here we are in uh, June of 2023. And so uh, an open source project that's been going on for over 10 years, I think that's, uh, that's pretty good. We've had our most current release, uh, the 255 release, uh, just this month. And there's been some specific reasons for this latest uh, 255 release that I'll get into. So a couple of the major library changes over the last few years. Um, we've added you know, dependencies on the latest version of GDAL, GDAL v3, uh, mainly for proj support. Uh, we now have our own um, uh, LAZ um, library for compression, the LASPERF library. Uh, one of the big add additions to the library was uh, COPIC or COPSI support, uh, which I'll get into in a little bit in the 2.4 release. And we've continued to add bug fixes and stuff like that over the last uh, few releases. And one of the new things in uh, the 2.5 release was a stack support. And this will become very important later on, as you'll see a little bit more. But we're starting to move towards the cloud-native geospatial um, implementations in, in PDAL. So some of the new things in the 2.5 release, uh, TerraSolid support, um, both read and write support, which is new. Uh, you can now get ProjJSON output. So it's a lot of times easier to um, render JSON and read portions of JSON than it is to deal with well-known text and well-known text too. Uh, we now have a trajectory estimation filter, um, Leica PTX support, which was a contribution. Um, we now have a readers.stack, which is, um, uh, uses the stack item collection support. And you'll see that the VPC extension will become important later. And we've now added um, uh, cloud support to NIDF and BPF, so you can read write um, NIDF and BPF uh, from VSI S3 or other kinds of um, cloud connections using the Arbiter library. And it now supports the, the V2 um, enhanced metadata support for, uh, for S3. So PDEL or Poodle is a collection of, it's basically one application, a kernel, uh, one program, and a bunch of different applications which are really just all implementations around a pipeline. All the other um, items you see here, tindex, tile, translate, they're essentially all creating mini pipelines um, that are essentially virtual and then just get rid of them after they're done. You'll see a bunch of Ds after some of these applications. These are ones we're planning to deprecate because mainly they're just not really used all that much. Uh, you can do all of them with um, Poodle Translate or Poodle Pipeline and, and the filter commands. And they're just, when they're not being used, it's no point to keep them if they're not being um, exercised. So we found some bugs in the latest version of um, in the 255 release on the ground, so we decided we were going, we have a planned deprecation process, but if uh, we hear from people that, you know, they do use these, then we won't deprecate them. So one of the things that's new now is uh, there's a new library called Poodle Wrench, which is an add-on to Poodle, so it does require Poodle. It's a, it's a higher level library. It's designed to work with simplified commands. And one of the things that's really nice is it adds uh, parallel operations uh, to Poodle, something that Poodle doesn't have currently and is not going to have. That's one of the things we're trying to keep it at the library level. So um, this is uh, a, an application that runs on top of Poodle and does parallel opera operations on top of that library. And it supports something called virtual point clouds. And we'll get into that. So virtual point clouds can be created with Poodle Wrench. They're basic, they are just a stack item collection. 
So you can create stack item collections of point clouds and that's, the, that's a virtual point cloud. So it's a, just an easier way of referring to a collection of, of point clouds as a single unit um, as a cloud native geospatial organization. QGIS, uh, the latest release, is now VPC or virtual point cloud aware and QGIS point cloud processing will be using these VPCs and Poodle Wrench. And you're probably wondering what is QGIS point cloud processing? Well, the latest release as of this Monday now has the ability to process point clouds natively in QGIS using PDAL. So this is, this is really a big uh, change um, in the ability to make use of uh, the library and point clouds. So now you have graphical user interface, you have higher level interfaces like Poodle Wrench, and you have the base underlying library. So you can get a lot of things done in a much easier fashion now. One of the things I said uh, was new to the library is uh, Copsy or Copic, however you want to say it. And what it adds to um, LAZ is the ability to, uh, to um, add spatial access. So it's not just range read, but being able to range read to a certain uh, box window in the, in the data set or to a certain depth of resolution. And it's this capability that's really enabled a lot of the visualization capabilities of point clouds in something like QGIS. But in the end, like COG, it's just an LAZ file. So you can use it in all your software that you use LAZ, uh, but you do have this higher level organization, this EPT style um, octree metadata in the format that allows you to read to a certain depth or a, spa or a uh, spatial organization. And I see some people nodding, yeah, it's a big deal. So the major, one of the commands you'll be using a lot is Poodle Info. It's basic just information about your point cloud, stats, metadata, dimensions, all these kinds of things. Uh, but one of the key um, options here is summary. It's a, it's a nice way to get overall information about your point clouds because it'll fetch the metadata without reading the point data. And when you're dealing with large things like uh, virtual point clouds that might be hundreds of billions or you know, however many billions of points, you don't want to necessarily read that much data, but you, you can use summary to get an overall um, value about that. So here's just an example data set over um, Estonia, rendered in QGIS. And you can see that we're running the info here. Um, this reads through all the data. It took 312 seconds to read this data because it's 468 million points. It's a big file. But one of the things we can do because it's a Copsy or Copic file is we can set the resolution to five meters and then just read a subset of the data. So now you can see it only took 48 seconds to read it. So this is the capability that allows QGIS to render point cloud data in a kind of fairly seamless fashion because it only has to read as much data as it needs to do for the visualization. So we said Poodle has a stack reader. Here's reading uh, a stack item collection. And this is a virtual point cloud created with Poodle Wrench. So here it's reading just basic information about the uh, stack item collection, all the bounds, the stack IDs that went into it, and the total number of points. And this was 693 million points. So it's a pretty big collection of data. And of course, Poodle Wrench can do the same thing. It can read that information and present it in a more user-friendly fashion. Poodle is designed to be a library. It returns it in JSON. Wrench is designed to be a higher level application. It returns it in more of a text format. Or if you run it in QGIS, it prevents it in you know, a similar way, but right in the uh, QGIS interface. Poodle can generate very detailed boundaries of your data, actually reading the points um, and, and being able to filter them uh, and spec specifying the thresholds of you know, what data you want to actually show so you can see holes in your data, water areas, other things like that. And with, of course, Copic, you can set the spatial resolution. So you can do very um, shallow readings of your data or very uh, complex readings of your data. Wrench, on the other hand, when it gives you a boundary, will just essentially be giving you the, um, the stack index, uh, the stack item collection boundary. Translate is, you know, if you guys have used GDAL or um, OGR, 
you know that's one of the main things you're going to be using all the time. It's the basic option to translate data from one format to another. But essentially, since everything is a pipeline, you can do more than that in the translate command. Essentially, it's a mini pipeline operation. So you can see in the third example, I'm translating a, a data set from uh, a website, but specifying a polygon that it uh, clips it to. Or in the third operation, the third one, I'm specifying um, stack reader args to only read the copic data to a, um, a resolution of three meters, so I don't have to read as much data. Whereas when you're dealing with wrench, you can do the same kind of translation operations or translate uh, projections at the same time, but your options are more limited. It's a higher level command, it's going to work in parallel, but you don't have all the flexibility of the, the underlying point cloud or uh, Poodle library. So what are pipelines? Pipelines are essentially the full power of Poodle. They're a way to organize readers, filters, and writers in an organized collection that allows you to process data and read data once and write data once and do a bunch of operations. Uh, they can be done with command line overrides, which is great for batch processing, and I'll show some examples of that. But essentially you want to, basically since you're dealing with so much data, you only want to read it once. And that's the whole idea behind pipelines. So here's an example pipeline, just reading um, with a sp specified reader, clipping it to a specific polygon, specifying an output, re uh, a reprojection filter, and then writing it out to a new data set. I could have done this with Poodle Translate, it would essentially be the same thing. Writing Poodle Translate and these commands would essentially create a pipeline in memory, process it, and return the data. But the nice advantage of pipelines is you can create an overall pipeline that doesn't reference any particular data set, input or output. And then you can pass those inputs, outputs uh, on the fly when you need it. So here an example, I'm reading LAS data, applying a DEM filter, ranging it from 30 to 100 and writing it out as copic. But there's no file specified, so I just um, use batch operations like uh, parallel or xargs and pass a whole range of data to the pipeline and it just seamlessly does the replacement of the uh, file names as it does the processing. And of course you can specify these kinds of things in parallel. And you can do really complex workflows here, or causing things to come in at various points, um, specifying tag operations so one filter leads to another while another one comes in from another location, and you can do really complex workflows this way. I don't get too scared about this, but this is just an example of a really complex workflow that takes in a, a bit of data, filters out the noise, clears out all classifications, reprojects it, does a ground operation, um, uh, Smurf operation to uh, calculate ground filters, splits it into tiles, writes it out to Copsy, merges those then back together, just filters it based on ground operations, and then writes it out to a, a GDAL uh, surface. So this is all things that you can put into a pipeline uh, if you're doing overall batch processing of a lot of data where you have to specify this once and just pass through a bunch of information about uh, the data. You can do reprojection with uh, Poodle. It uses the proj engine to do this reprojection. And at the, at the Poodle level, it does support full vertical data reprojection as long as you do have the grid shift files. Or you can do really complex operations with a full proj pipeline and specify things as, as much, with as much detail as you need to do. I see somebody in the audience smiling about that because they do it. Wrench is a higher level op operation, so you can only do um, EPSG codes, uh, other things like that, and it does not do uh, vertical datum reprojection at this point. There's an effort to add um, vertical datum support to QGIS, and when that comes into QGIS, then it'll be supported in Wrench and it, in the QGIS interface. So. In, in QGIS, you can just do a, a 2D reprojection. You can't do the vertical data reprojection. The GDAL writer is one that's used very, very commonly uh, to con convert point clouds into a raster surface. Because this is using the create 
API and not the create copy API. You can only create a GeoTIFF, you can't create a COG because it doesn't have a source raster to create the copy from. So it's creating a GeoTIFF, but it won't create a COG this way. So here's an example of using Poodle Translate that could also be a pipeline, reading uh, an entire VPC, specifying the resolution of the reader, specifying the resolution of the writer, uh, some GDAL options on the, the resulting GeoTIFF that's being written using uh, lurk compression, thank you, and some maxi error. You can also do the same kind of thing with Poodle Wrench, and you can see the commands are much more simplified, and if it's reading from uh, Copsy or a VPC, it can do these kinds of things in parallel. So it'll read windows of the um, Copsy file and write this operation in parallel. And of course you can do this in QGIS as well, specifying nice things like filtering on classification, setting window bounds and other things like this. There's a colorization filter to actually apply color from some GDAL source. Um, to point clouds. It's not used that much, but occasionally it becomes very useful to take uh, a point cloud for visualization and apply some coloring to it uh, from some data source, and then you can visualize that. Uh, ground is another, as a filter that's used very commonly to um, classify your point cloud data uh, and find ground locations. It's a filter and an app. Um, the app will probably be going away because everybody uses the filter. Um, and you can basically clear out any expressions you have in the data set and use the Smurf filter to apply ground um, to the data set as a classification. And then from that, use just the ground uh, classified um, points to write your then um, your GDAL output. So here's an example where we've removed all the buildings, all the other uh, structures and stuff like that and created a nice DTM of the, of the surface. Poodle has a tindex command for basically doing the same thing as a VPC. Um, it's an OGR format, so it's a little bit heavier. It, it's not necessarily a cloud native organization like uh, Stack is. So it's, it's one of those things that's been around for a while, it's useful, but most of the effort will probably be towards stack item collections and VPCs, since it'll be stored, supported at the, um, at the QGIS level. Uh, Poodle Wrench has an option to build VPCs by just giving it a list of tiles. Um, but since it's a stack item collection, you can use any of the stack tools to create your own uh, item collection. Uh, oftentimes these will be done programmatically. And then you just drag and drop your VPC into QGIS and you have a nice collection. And it's scale dependent, so as you zoom in and zoom out, it will fetch more and more data um, for the visualization. And, you know, because you have a nice graphical user interface, you can filter on your classifications, your scale, or other things you need to do for your visualization. Oftentimes you want to go the other way. You have a big collection and you want to retile it to, um, to a various different outputs. Um, because it's an, uh, a stream operation, you, can, you can't write directly to Copic. You have to write to LAZ and then they convert those into Copic. Um, and I'll explain what I mean about stream formats in just a moment. But QGIS has the same command uh, that you can at the underlying t uh, Poodle library. There's a complete Python API, which is something that's new in the last three or four releases. Um, it's nice that it's a full Python objects now that it uh, didn't used to be. So you can actually go in and do um, very simple processing in Python uh, using something like Jupyter Notebook or other things like that for exploratory data analysis. And you can just construct your pipelines by just stacking together various uh, Python operations. And this is some of the documentation. So Poodle scales at the process level. It doesn't have support for uh, parallelization in the library, but something like Poodle Wrench does. It can do pro um, parallel processing on formats that support bounded queries like EPT and Copic. Um, 
when you're dealing with these things, oftentimes you want to make uh, bounded queries that are a little bit larger than your area of interest in order to deal with edge effects. But parallel processing should be done at the at a level above the library. Xargs, Parallel, Dask, or Poodle Wrench, or other those kinds of things. But the difference here is um, there are two modes in Poodle, depending on whether how the um, the filter or the reader writer works, standard mode and streaming. The standard mode reads an entire data set or operates on an entire data set at a time, whereas streaming mode runs on chunks at a time. And there's just simply some formats and filters that can't operate a chunk at a time. Ground operations where you need to read the entire data set in order to look at the neighbors and other things like that and calculate the, uh, the ground positions. But the validate command on pipelines will tell you whether your pipeline is streamable or has some standard mode filters. It's almost also in the documentation. Each one is listed whether it's streamable or not. In terms of documentations, this is another thing that's new. Uh, we've switched over to read the docs. Uh, so it's now versions, so you can see what the docs are at various different points in time. This is another big thing that's uh, been really helpful. Uh, we have extensive workshop in the docs that have just recently been redone using QGIS uh, for the, for the uh, workshop. And we have a lot of tutorials in there. So that's another good thing to be used. I'm wrapping up now. <laughs> we have um, releases coming through the Poodle.io channel. Um, and it's being uh, generated through Conda. So that's probably one of the best places to get uh, Poodle output is through Conda Forge. Uh, Poodle Wrench is now uh, in the PDAL re repo, but it was under a separate uh, category. There will be a Conda release soon, but it is included with QGIS 3.32, uh, which is now available for download. And that's about it.